How's it going guys? Electron Man. Hope you're having a good day out there. Well, I hope you're not getting tired of all these uh, radios I've been doing, but I, like I said, I had a big pile of them I want to get through. Try to check them all out, see what was worth keeping, what was getting rid of, what was worth repairing. Anyway, I picked up this, uh, hope you're getting a good view of that, uh, this uh, Sharper Image. Never quite heard of it. Um, it's an all band with shortwave. It is digital. Um, but I picked it up for a song, I, you know, I think like four or five bucks, something like that. And I thought it was worth uh, giving it a try and seeing what we got here. So anyway, uh, I kind of uh, looked ahead and plug it in here. I did plug it in just a minute ago, kind of see if we got anything. And uh, what I found out so far is, is that the, uh, I kind of already diagnosed it. Um, Should have had it on video, but basically I plugged it up and uh, it didn't have any sound. And I got the monkeying with the switch up top here. And I hopefully you can see that and that switch right there and uh, I could get it to work on uh, AM and if I monkeyed around with it I could get it to work on FM so I think the only thing really wrong with this radio is obviously we've got a bad or dirty selector switch there so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop this video and we're gonna get her taken apart kind of see what we got going on on the inside of it and uh, see if it's repairable or worth repairable I think it will be hopefully uh, Nothing too bad in there. The switch might be real proprietary. It might be hard to get price with switch, but hopefully it just needs to be cleaned. Usually that's all it needs. So hey, let me get the camera switched around here, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, and uh, see what we got on the inside of this guy. Okay, guys. Well, I've got the screws out. I thought I'd kind of come back on this, and it <laughs> kind of got interesting. I don't know if you can see it now, but I actually had to put Windex down in the holes of this thing because they were full caked with dirt. Which is not a good sign. So obviously this thing either got wet, dropped in the mud or something. But yeah, all the screw holes were uh, full of mud. So I, I tried, you know, kind of cleaning it out with a screwdriver first and getting all the loose stuff. And then I put a little uh, Windex down in there to soften the mud basically. And I did manage to get all the screws out. A couple of the heads are really rusted on it. So it's definitely uh, had some water exposure. And also I was looking inside of there and... and uh, the battery terminals look really rusted. I don't know if that's from a bad set of batteries in there or just uh, this thing got wet and it's corrosion, but uh, not a good sign. Uh, I mean, I initially it powered on, but uh, like I said, the sucker switch. So, anyway, let's get her opened up and see what we got here. I don't know. Uh, I've already, it's got six screws one in the middle, two on each side, and one in the battery compartment. I think it should come apart now. Hey, I got come apart easy. Ooh. Dude, I don't know if you guys can see this. Wow, look at all that rust. I don't know if that's battery corrosion or rust, but uh, wow. Okay, well that's not a good sign. No wonder the side switch is giving me issue. Oh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but you know, there's the there's the slide switch. And look, it's got rust all over it. So that explains why it wasn't working real well. Wow, it's even got some rust down in here. I don't know, this might be a, a lost cause. Boy, she's definitely got some rust down here. This thing got wet at one time. I guess it depends on if it dried out before they tried to power it on. It looks like it's pretty, uh, it's got a pretty nice IS section. This might be a decent radio if I can get it working. Um, that's the power board. It's got a really extensive power board. I'm surprised there's that much. It's got a complete board. For, uh, for AC power. That's your tonal switch. There's your transformer. I mean, it doesn't look run, but boy, it definitely did have some water exposure. Well, let me, uh, hopefully you're getting a good video of this. Uh, let me go ahead and go get my uh, deoxid and see if I can clean that switch. And uh, I think I'll get me a toothbrush and uh, try to brush this thing out a little bit, get it cleaned up and blow it out and see what we got. I'll be back. Okay, guys, I have uh, descaled it, I guess you would say. Uh, I got a wire brush in here and tried to kind of gently uh, kind of scratch up the circuit board a little bit, trying to get some of these screws and stuff cleaned off. But uh, anyway, I tried to get all the loose rust out of it. I think I did a pretty good job of getting it cleaned out. But there's nothing really loose laying around anymore. That's a little bit dirty to lap off there a little bit. But anyway, it doesn't look too bad in here. And, you know, it's interesting. It's like a... All the screws and the, I guess the untreated metal parts really rusted, but the circuit boards look really good. I don't see like any rust at all on them. 
I guess it's because uh, they're kind of rest, you know, with probably lead solder and uh, and the circuit board being what it is, it just didn't really seem to the rust didn't seem to get into it, and obviously it's completely dry now. Um, kind of interesting to see if that'll actually work. I deox the heck out of that slide switch right here. It definitely feels more. Before it just kind of slid back forth and sounded crusty, but now it's got a nice click to it. So. With any luck, we got that switch cleaned out enough that it'll work, and I, I hit it with the wire brush, and it actually cleaned up pretty good. It doesn't look anything like it did, and like I said, component-wise, all the components look good on it, so I'm going to go ahead and, I mean, I don't want to get too much more wilder with the, with the wire brush. I'm going to end up maybe breaking something that's not broke now, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of put the cover back on here, just temporarily here, and plug her up and see what we got. Need to blow that front out a little bit too, but I mean, you know, actually it's not bad stuff. I'm guessing it was in a flood or something. I don't know. It definitely got completely wet, but the good thing is, is with it powering up like that, I don't think it was powered up while it was, it was wet. Or maybe I'm the first person to power it up in a year. Who knows? But uh, let's go ahead and plug it back in. It does light up. Uh, let's see here. Where we got going here? I, mean, I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can see that. It does power on. And I didn't feel like I got the switch set right. Okay, it says it's on. Let me go to FM and see if I got anything working now. I got sound now. Uh, let's see, 89. Let's see, correct. Um, Buttons seem to be working. <laughs> Check it out, guys. By an unnamed policeman. Two of the women secretly recorded their ordeals. The victims have now identified the policeman using a leaked database from a food delivery company. Wow. social media accounts and old dating profiles. But this thing they actually works all the way them, through. I'm impressed. To account. South Korea's unification minister has called sound. for talks with his North Korean counterpart to discuss. Well, I'm kind of really surprised. Oh, see there. Oh, I turned. I did it. Okay. So, I need to clean that power plug out a little bit. Seems like it's. New research from Australia shows that natural disasters have cost each household of the country the equivalent of more than one thousand U.S. dollars on average in the past year. A report by the Insurance Council of Australia. Amazing. Costs on catastrophic flooding okay, in guys, well, let me, uh, It highlights how the loss wow. of crops and livestock fueled let's inflation. See actually, the report says costs see will continue to rise for years to come. East, but the rays and the man, this thing is receiving awesome. within striking distance. At least on FM, anyway. Let me, uh, it's late at sun. night, it's like midnight, so I don't know if we're gonna get anything on AM, but let me move it over to AM. Okay, it's got sound, that's good. Let's just go, uh, scan. <laughs> What makes you think that you're going to have scan didn't work? But in just over a decade. I guess you're not quite strong enough. Well, I mean, 2035 is a long, is a long Most AM stations, well. they turn the power down at night, too, to so to it makes it even harder for me to give an example on it. Uh, see, there's a. Uh, Well, I picked up a couple of them stations, which, like I said, at night they turn their power down. I'm in a metal building, so I'm not going to... It's working. That's right. I mean, that's what we really care about. It is working. Uh, I know that by, for sure, one of the stronger stations I have is uh, the Grex. Right there, I know, I'm, on the back of the I know she's working. Not, she's working. not bad, actually, either. I mean, this is in a metal building, so... Uh, let's go short wave. This ought to be the exciting one. I'm not a big end of guy. Thursday in Los Whoa. Angeles. You know, repetition is the father of learning. So I've, I've envisioned it. Well, I thought that was uh, shortwave. 
Oh, that was FM. It's got background noise. That's a good sign. How low does it go? It goes from 2610 to 2.3 megahertz. That's good. So it's got a pretty broad range on the shortwave side of things. Down is, does it work? Always working. Picked up another one. Another one. There's two There's others, another one. but let us watch Solid. and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken. Seven point five seven megahertz. But let us sport of the day. Not sober, bad, guys. Not bad. This has become a score. I'm not a digital guy, but this guy's picking up nice. Look at that. I'll be dang. This thing's got some ears on it. Not impressed with the scan so much, but it's definitely got some ears on it. Let me say did uh Okay, gotta turn that down. We I mean, definitely it's working on sideband. It's actually working so good that I got kind of sidetracked there and got interested just how good it's working, especially sitting here in a metal building with nothing but a little alligator clip on the antenna it's uh <laughs> it's actually not doing bad this is a good little radio especially golly i mean with what we saw inside that this thing's still in direct entry the keypad's still working good although the buttons seem to be working good on let me see uh what else do we got here uh shortwave we've got tv interesting if y'all can see how that not sure why it's picking up. Interesting how they've got that. They got it like like the channels on a TV. I guess it does. It goes to one through thirteen. Wow. Interesting how they have that set up. Well, consider channel all, TV all went digital. That's kind of a wasted band. And the last one is weather. Is the weather working? With a temperature of seventy four. I am tickled. It was clear with a temperature this of sixty three. This is a good radio. I think I only gave about five bucks for it. All I needed was to get the rest out of it, and I deoxed the uh, selector switch on the top, and we have one repaired radio. That's awesome. I like this little radio. We'll, we'll definitely go back and do a review on it as well. Um, kind of see what she does as far as reception wise. Since we know she's working 100% now, I'll probably do it in the afternoon when there's a lot more channels and uh, actually see what this guy does. I'll tell you what. I mean, we saw it inside. It was pretty well manufactured, and uh, and it took a. It's like a Timex watch. It took a beat and it's still ticking. So uh, yeah, we're gonna give this one a, a definitely seven look. I'm just tickled. I got her fixed easy wise too. And uh, I might get her spray paint a little clear on there just to hopefully stop any rust that started. But as long as it doesn't get any moisture, it shouldn't be any problem. And as you can see, it didn't hurt any of the uh, the components, which is amazing. I'd like to know the story. Maybe it's laying on his back and it got flooded like, I don't know. I can't explain how the circuit boards didn't have any rust on them other than the switches. And uh, all the screws and everything else were rusted, something terrible. Interesting. interesting. A little interesting repair there. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this little uh, sharper image uh, all-band digital receiver. I'll look and see. I'll give you a link if you can still purchase this. I'm not sure too much about it, what it went for, etc. But I'm pretty impressed. I like the size and it's... It's multi-power, it runs on batteries or AC. Doesn't look like it has a DC jack, so it's just a, uh, it's either AC or batteries. So, and by the way, I got the battery compartment cleaned out real good. I didn't have any problem at all. Wire brush cleaned it right up, so. Hey, we've restored a radio. I'm gonna actually get a rag and clean it all up real good and blow it out a little bit more too, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and uh, hit that little bell so you know when the next cool video is coming up. And again, I hope you don't mind all these radio videos, but. I just had a whole bunch of them to do and thought I'd just go ahead and kind of get them all out. Anyway, have a great day, guys. This is Electron Man.